Okay, continuing where we left off, we're solving using the square root property. What you're going to notice on these next couple of examples is that we're going to have to square root negative values. And so we're going to get those complex solutions, those values that involve uh, the imaginary value i. So we're going to be using that. So here, what we're going to do is we're going to square root both sides. We're going to have our plus minus. And so then this is going to be x equals plus or minus. Now, because of the negative, remember, we don't want to overthink this, but what's going to happen is an i is going to come with my solution. So I'm going to get plus or minus 4i. And like I said, that's a pretty interesting topic, but we're not going to dive too deep into that in this course. We just kind of, um, it's a workaround for us right now. And like I said, if you're interested in that, there's other courses you can take that are devoted to looking at the complex number system. Okay, moving on. So here's another one, but prior to using the square root property, we have to isolate the squared value. So we're going to start by adding 8 to both sides. And so then let's see, we end up with 3x squared equals negative 192. And then next we're going to divide both sides by 3. And let's see, we end up with x squared equals negative, let's see, what is that, 64 it looks like. Okay, so that worked out pretty nice. And so then we'll go ahead and square root both sides. Put our plus or minus right there. And this should be pretty similar to the previous one. So we're going to get x equals plus or minus 8i. And there you go. Okay, moving on to these next examples should be pretty similar, except we have a little bit more going on here. We've got squared quantities. And so x minus 3 squared. So we're going to start by square rooting that. And then we have to square root the negative 25, put the plus or minus. So now we have x minus 3 is equal to plus or minus 5i. Then next we need to isolate the variable. So we'll add 3 to both sides. We'll squeeze it in right there. And so we're left with x equals 3 plus or minus 5 i and that's it we can't go any further we can't actually add or subtract those so we have to just leave it like that you can write it out twice though you can write it one with plus and then also with the minus like that all right so continuing on to example m so here we want to go ahead and isolate that squared quantity. So we're going to subtract 49 from both sides. And now we'll go ahead and square root both sides. And we got to put that plus minus right there. And so now we release that. So we have uh, 5x minus 1 equals plus or minus 7i. And now we need to go ahead and add 1 to both sides. And we're going to sneak that in right there. So now we've got 5x equals 1 plus or minus 7i. And then now we're going to divide both sides by 5. And actually, we're going to want to leave it like that. So let's see. We have x equals 1 plus or minus 7i all over 5 right there. Now, technically, if you wanted to, you could break it into 1 fifth plus 7 fifths i. Okay. Um, if you were to get into graphing complex numbers, this is actually the way you would write it. But this is fine for what we're doing here. You can leave it like this. Um, and so, yeah, that, that's going to be the end of that. And so now we're going to kind of look at maybe a couple special cases. We could kind of get pretty in-depth on this, but I at least want to highlight a couple, a couple differences depending on the index. Now, the index is the root that you're taking. So all these were square roots. We've been doing square roots. The index is this value here. Sometimes you might want to take a cube root. So for example, uh, the cube root of 8 would be 2. The cube root of 8 would be 2 because 
8 could be written as 2 to the power of 3, right? And the cube root nullifies that cube power. Okay, so we're going to see a couple of examples down here. So right here it says, note, when solving a cubic equation by a cube rooting both sides, do not include the plus or minus. So we actually don't do that when we're looking at cubes. Hence, there will only be one solution. Furthermore, any odd root to solve an equation will not include the plus or minus. So even if, if you're doing a cube root or a fifth root or so on, you don't do the plus or minus if it's odd, if it's going to be odd. But using any even root will require the plus or minus. Lastly, taking an odd root of a negative number will not result in a complex solution. So whenever we take cube roots, we'll actually never get imaginary solutions. We won't have to deal with those I's. So looking at this first example right here, x cubed equals 27. So we're going to take the cube root of both sides. Now, I do not put the plus or minus, okay? And the reason why is there's only one solution that will make this work. There's only one value. There's only one value that when you cube it will equal 27. And that value is 3. So x equals 3 on this first one. That's the only value that when you raise it to a power of 3 actually will equal 27. So example B, the only difference is I throw that negative in there. So once again, we'll just go ahead and cube root both sides right here. And so here's a little trick you can do. Uh, so right here, that will cancel out the cube root and the cube power. But what we can do here is whenever you have an odd, it has to be odd. But if it is odd, you can actually pull the negative on the outside and just kind of focus on actually evaluating the root right here. Well, we already know that the cube root of 27 is 3 from our previous problem. So this actually becomes negative 3. That is my answer right there. Okay? And if you think about it, negative 3 raised to the power of 3, well, that would be negative 3 times negative 3 times negative 3. Well, a negative times a negative is positive 9, and then 9 times negative 3 is negative 20. 7. And so you can see that, yeah, negative 3, that's why that's my answer, because if I raise it to a power of 3, it would indeed equal negative 27. Okay, example C is really not much different than example B. So if we take the cube root of both sides, which you can do since it's an odd root, you can pull that negative out and just focus on taking the cube root of 125. And you might have to think about it for a moment, but this is going to simplify into a 5, and more precisely, we're going to have negative 5 because of the negative that was pulled out right there.